Yo, what's up y'all, Marquez here, and I had a bit of extra time for something that I'm out here in LA for. So, while I was here, I decided to go stop by the Peterson Auto Museum. And what do you know, they have a Tesla exhibit here with a bunch of Tesla's vehicles set up, including the 2019 Cybertruck prototype. Essentially the one that was on stage when it was first revealed a couple years ago. So, this is my second look, a closer look at this thing. The first time was very much rushed and from afar and at night with a press event, so this is a nice refresher. So now, we've seen this before, and a lot of you might remember most of it, but seeing it up close, I was able to notice a couple smaller things too. So this panel at the back left, I think is most likely covering up what would be a charging port, so I didn't see that before. You know, the door handles are these flush, flat things, kind of just like the body style of the Model S, so I assume they'll motorize out. It's the one thing that breaks a lot on a Tesla Model S, but it's great for aero, so there's that. And here's a closer look at the, the wheels too, which makes the fact that these are uh, just like aero cap covers much more obvious. They definitely fit the aesthetic though, because there are, as I remember, absolutely no curves to this truck whatsoever. Just hard lines and angles throughout the whole shape of this trapezoid on wheels, especially the corners. Like this truck legit has some sharp corners at the front and back edges, which is fine, I guess. I mean, it shouldn't touch anything, but I noticed them nevertheless. This will probably be the easiest vehicle in the world to wrap, so shout out to the wrap shops. Uh, I think it's worth saying, though, that since this is the 2019 prototype, I shouldn't really put too much stock in, like, the small details because they could absolutely change. In fact, they probably will. Like, we've seen footage of more Cybertrucks being tested that have side view mirrors, for example, instead of just these cameras that this one has. Uh, we've also seen them experiment with like a gigantic single windshield wiper for this huge angular piece of glass at the front. But what I really took away from this second look, from being able to get up close and stand right next to this thing, is just how absolutely massive this truck is. This thing is huge, okay? It's tall, it is wide. The back bed here is a good example just to get an idea. It's just expansive. Like it looks like it's about a six foot bed, maybe even a little longer. Uh, it's got the lights in it. It's got the mounting points for tying things down. There's also some panel back here that kind of looks like it might cover some power outlets potentially. But, you know, with the high sides and the huge tailgate, like, this is a huge truck that you can fit a lot of stuff in. The tailgate also has uh, this extension with, like, this kind of grip tape on it that goes down to the ground level for something like the Cyber Quad to be able to just drive into the back of this thing. And no, the Cyber Quad is not small. It's a, you know, it's an ATV. It's it's tough to appreciate really just how massive the truck is without like some scale. I tried to get some shots with people next to it. I'm standing next to it, but yeah, the, the back of this thing you can already tell is huge. And then up front, it looks like there could still be plenty of room for a sizable front trunk. I'm actually hoping they do that. It looks like right above the headlight LEDs would be a bit high to reach for some people actually, but the way it's cut, I'm kind of thinking that's where it would have to be. But yeah, there's just a ton of space because of how big this is. So I think a front trunk would be sweet. And then this is me sitting down here at the bumper like I normally do with the other cars I shoot on this channel. And from down here, you can see like, I can't even see the windshield at all. Like not even close, which means that if someone was in the driver's seat, there's no shot they'd be able to see me sitting here or like really anything that's this close to the front bumper. Now, I will make a note that the truck they have staged here is in this kind of loading mode with the suspension. So you can see it's leaning back here to be able to drop the tailgate low to the ground and load things into the truck, which is a super cool feature. And that lets us see how massive of a difference there is between the suspension all the way up, which just looks like a ton of clearance, and then the suspension all the way down, which is probably how it'll ride most of the time on the road and in the sportier modes. But yeah, that's a huge clearance. That's great for off-roading but it probably won't ride that high at the front all the time. But still though, it's, it's a good illustration of how huge this truck is. Uh, there's been some talk about possibly making it smaller in every dimension just by a little bit. It would not shock me at all if that ended up happening because when you see how many hundreds of thousands of pre-orders this truck has, there's like a guaranteed a non-zero percentage of those people who are not ready for a truck this big. Like who don't realize that this won't fit in their driveway. It absolutely won't fit in their garage. Uh, and it's probably overkill size-wise for whatever they were imagining. But then, yeah, the last bit is, okay, they did reveal this a couple years ago, and it still hasn't shipped. So guess what? The landscape of electric trucks is actually meaningfully different now. Like, there's real competition on the road. So when they unveiled this, it was like the only electric truck. But now, 
There is F-150 Lightning on the road already. Rivian R1T is out there on the streets. Even the Hummer EV. And so that got me thinking, what's the advantage of the Cybertruck gonna be? Now, obviously, there's a lot of Tesla hype and people who want something unique. And this is definitely that. Like, there's no mistaking this huge metal trapezoid dump truck on the road for anything else. And people are going to be into that. But besides that, I think the advantage basically just has to be price and range, right? F-150 Lightning is pretty premium, but Rivian R1T is also $80,000 plus. The Hummer is well over $100,000. So if Tesla actually delivers what they promised, which is a huge if, considering what's happened in the car market since then, but if they actually deliver this thing at, let's say, $50,000, $60,000, and with the Tesla supercharging network and 350 miles of range, then that's something the competitors don't have yet. Because the competitors do have high-end acceleration and driving performance. The competitors do have amazing off-roading capability. They do have storage and truck features and front trunks and all that other stuff. But the Cybertruck has these looks and the power of the Tesla drivetrain. So that is something to think about. Anyway, this will be an interesting one to keep an eye on, along with all the other crazy stuff Tesla says they're doing, or, you know, Elon says Tesla's doing, like this Optimus robot, which I also got a first look at in this museum, which looks absolutely unreal. I mean, it looks it looks like a, just a robot you put in a museum that would never walk, but apparently this is the type of thing they want in people's houses. Uh, the Roadster also, you know, maybe someday, maybe it'll exist, I don't know. There's also a Tesla semi-truck out here, which was cool. But anyway, make sure you get subscribed to this channel to see all this good stuff when it finally ships, because I will be taking a look at it for sure. Either way, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.